Draw three squares. Connect these two corners with a line. As well as these corners. As well as these corners. What is the sum of these three angles? Pause the video if you'd like to solve it for yourself. And when you're ready, I'm going to give not just one solution, but three solutions. For our first solution, we're going to zoom out and draw three extra squares above the originals. We're going to connect these corners with a line. And since both triangles have base 2 and height 1, they have the same green angle. Drawing this line gives us another pair of triangles with base 2 and height 1. Thus, they share yet another identical green angle. Let the yellow angle denote the complement, and we will also draw the right angle in the triangle. These angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. On the other hand, these adjacent angles on a straight line also add up to 180 degrees. Since the yellow and green angles are the same, it remains that the middle angle must also be a right angle. However, we also noticed a right angle triangle involving the blue angle. The sides of this triangle are identical, making it isosceles. But since the green sides are identical as well, we actually obtain a similarity in isosceles triangles with right angles. This tells us that the bottom left angle must also be equal to the blue angle. But now we see that the green, red and blue angles fit nicely in the corner of the square. This can only mean that they add up to 90 degrees. This first solution is given by NumberFile, and I've left a link to their video in the screen. For our second solution, we're going to use a little bit of trigonometry. We'll label the red, green, and blue angles by Z, Y, and X respectively. And by trigonometry, since the adjacent of X and the opposite of X is one unit, the tangent of X equals to 1. Similarly, by considering the green triangle, the tangent of y is the opposite 1 over the adjacent 2. And finally, by considering the red triangle, the tangent of z equals 1 over 3. We can apply the inverse of the tangent to obtain x, y, and z in terms of arc tangents, which means that the angle sum is the sum of the following arc tangents. The question remains in calculating the sum of these three arctangents. We do know that tangents and arctangents cancel each other out. But can we find a similar result pertaining the tangent of a sum of arctangents? Since we're dealing with additions of angles, it helps to consider the addition formulae for sine and cosine, which tells us that the sine of a sum equals the sum of several cross terms. If you would like to know why this result is true, check out this video on trig laws. In particular, we know that the tangent of any angle equals its sine over cosine. We can plug in the expansions for sine and cosine, and by dividing a product of cosines on the numerator and the denominator, we can obtain this tangent sum formula as an exercise. Thus, we have obtained the tangent of a sum of two angles. We can replace u with the arctangent of half and v with the arctangent of one third. Since tangents and arctangents cancel each other out, the numerator simplifies to a half plus a third, and likewise with the denominator. Computing this result gives us the number 1. Taking arctangents on both sides, the sum of two arctangents equals the arctangent of 1. In fact, one could prove a more general result involving general angles R and S, which you guys can prove and let me know how it goes in the comments section below. Since these two arctangents sum to the arctangent of 1, we can make the replacement as follows, and evaluate the arctangent of 1. We can draw a right-angled triangle with base 1 and height 1, which makes it an isosceles triangle and therefore have a base angle of 45 degrees. This is precisely the arctangent of 1, 
which means we can replace both arc tangents of 1 with 45 degrees. These angles sum to 90 degrees. Our last solution involves the use of complex numbers, which are useful in encoding angles. If we treat the bottom left corner as the origin, these lines represent the complex numbers 1 plus i, 2 plus i, and 3 plus i. The angle x is encoded by the argument of the complex number 1 plus i, the angle y is encoded by the argument of 2 plus i, and the angle z is encoded by the complex number 3 plus i. Adding these angles therefore amounts to finding the sum of three arguments. But from complex numbers, we know that the sum of arguments is akin to the argument of their product. You can check this out in the complex numbers video in the video card. Let's first find the product of 2 plus i and 3 plus i. We can place these complex numbers in a column and a row as follows, and apply term-wise multiplication. For the first calculation, 2 times 3 gives us 6, 2 times i gives us 2i, i times 3 gives us 3i, and i times i gives us the square of i. But by the definition of i, i squared equals minus 1. This calculation simplifies to 5 plus 5i, where we can factor the 5. We can combine the 1 plus i's and compute their product just like before. We stack the two numbers on the column and the row. And 1 times 1 gives us 1. 1 times i gives us i, i times 1 gives us i, and i times i gives us the square of i. Once again, by the definition of i, i squared equals negative of 1. Since 1 minus 1 is 0 and i plus i is 2i, this simplifies to 2i. By multiplying 5 and 2, we will get 10i. Calculate the argument of 10i. Let's plot the complex plane as follows, and plot the point 10i on the complex plane. The argument is the angle it makes with the positive real axis, which in this case is a right angle. This tells us that 10i has an argument of 90 degrees, which agrees with the result that we obtained in the previous two solutions. Which of the three solutions do you enjoy the most for this one problem? Let me know in the comments section below. And if instead you'd like to prove three limits using one theorem, click on the video here.